Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes. In this tutorial, I'm calling a black back assembly line. So you want to decide where you want the center of your spiral to be and give it a little pinch. And I'm using the microwave splatter guard and a hemostat. And I got the microwave splatter guard off of Amazon and I have a link for it down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for um, tie-dye, so make sure you check that out. I click the hemostat down on the first click. It does not need to be overly tight, and you might need to rewind this, but I only spin it maybe one or two, maybe three times, and then I use my opposite hand to create the spiral. So if you watch, I'm holding it in place with the hemostat, because I do not want to tear a hole in the center of the shirt, and then just using the opposite hand. And then I unclick it and I hold down the center and I gently wiggle the hemostat out. And then I like to secure my spirals with my favorite rubber bands. And you guys, these really are the best rubber bands for spirals because they don't make it taco up. And then I like to create a very nice tight spiral. So I just pull on all of the loose tails, tucking them into the nearest rubber band and I'll go around and around pulling on all of the loose tails creating more pleats, tucking them into the rubber bands until the spiral just won't budge anymore. Keeping in mind that when you watch my tutorials, I have everything sped up. So if you're trying this method and you're still going at it at 10 minutes and wondering why it's taking so long, it takes me a long time too. This is a foundation for your tie dye, so you wanna make sure you get it right before you start adding your dye. So I tied up a whole bunch of spirals and I have them here in my assembly line. And this setup I learned from watching Mr. Tie Dye it's a closet made rack cut down to size and then it's sitting inside one of those under the bed totes that I picked up from Walmart and then PVC pipe that's cut down into bits to hold the rack up off the bottom of the tote. That way if there's any drips they can drip down through. Now I decided that I was going to dip all of these spirals because I thought it would be a lot quicker and I would have a little bit more control over how much dye is on the back. So when I'm doing a black back, I don't want to oversaturate. I just want to get enough on there so that I'm going to have black stripes. So I mixed up Raven Black with the normal recipe and I'm just pouring it down into this dollar store bowl and I'm dipping it. If you're going to use this method, pay attention to where your black is going. I was so focused on the center of this one that I forgot about the edges, and you'll see down the line at the very end. And instead of pressing on your shirt, you just want to take your bottle and add a little dye where you want it. So they're looking pretty good, and if you notice, my tight spirals are holding up. I'm able to pick them up and they're not falling apart. And I'm glad I checked the back on that one. It needed just a little bit more Raven Black, but I didn't want to pour it into the bowl because I didn't want to waste it. So now I'm going to add my rainbow colors, and I'm going to be starting with the three primary colors, the yellow, the red, and the blue. The reason for that is, or it's my theory anyways, when they go down to the center of the spiral and they meet, they're going to make the pretty secondary colors. If I started with the secondary colors, they will go down to the center of the spiral and they're going to make brown. Now, like I said, this is my theory. And also, I make my piece of the pie for the lemon yellow pretty big because it usually gets swallowed up by the other colors. They just creep right into it and it disappears.
I want to point out the shirt that's all the way to the right, the largest spiral. Notice how it has a lot of saturation in the center with the black. That's because I kept pressing on it in the bowl and I forced all of that black dye up through the bottom into the top of the shirt. You don't want to do that. So if you're gonna use this dipping method, just dip them in and if you need to add the dye, like I said, just take the bottle and squirt a little bit on. Going into this, I knew that my fuchsia red was somewhat old. And so if you guys are curious what old dye looks like, um, it looks like this. You notice how the fuchsia red has an appearance of being sort of cakey and thick. Also, it is my experience with fuchsia red that it doesn't creep as well as some of the other colors do. And I always seem to have white around my fuchsia red. That's why I went with the fire red as the primary red because I'm hoping to not have any white on these shirts at all. That's why I'm saturating them as much as I am. I know it looks like I'm just making a huge mess and going crazy and my pie pieces are all over the place. Steph must have gone crazy. She's forgotten how to liquid dye. Uh, to a certain degree that could be true because I'm always ice dyeing, but this is all by design. I'm overlapping the colors. By overlapping the colors, they're going to bleed into one another and make really pretty blends of like secondary colors. So if you notice, I overlap the grape on top of the fuchsia red and on top of the uh, bluebird and then I'm adding the turquoise and I'm overlapping it on top of the bluebird and then when I add the green it's going to overlap over top of the yellow and over top of the turquoise and I'll tell you one of my favorite colors is where the turquoise and the bright green mix it makes this really beautiful sort of oh gosh like a Kelly green type color and then when it meets the lemon yellow which lemon yellow is like a tongue twister for me today. Um, it makes like a really pretty bright, like um, more of a neonish type green. So this is all by design. It looks haphazard, but in the end, it's going to be gorgeous. If you're new to tie dyeing and new to using Dharma Trading Company's Deep Orange, I'll let you in on a little secret. It's a creeper. So a little bit goes a long way with the deep orange, and that also goes with um, ice dyeing with it as well. It can easily take over your entire project. So I'm not sure if this is true for all oranges out there in the universe. I would think maybe it is true, whatever the components are. But with orange, a little bit goes a long way. And you also have to keep in mind that once it mixes with the um, red and with the yellow, it's going to make secondary colors of orange as well. So um, a little goes a long way. And now I'm just going to finish up by adding more lemon yellow. I really want the lemon yellow to stay on these shirts. And if you notice, I'm like hosing down where it meets the green. I'm trying to push that green out of the center of it. And I'm okay with a lot of lemon yellow um, mixing with the orange and the green, as I mentioned before, because it makes really pretty secondary colors. Once I have the dye on the projects the way that I like them, I'm going to cover them with the lid on the tote and then I'm going to batch it for 48 hours. Now, I batch for 48 hours because I live in Oregon and it's still cold right now and I want to have the maximum vibrancy and I want to make sure that the Procyon dye and the soda ash have enough time to bond with one another and get into those fibers. 
but it's your prerogative to batch however long you want to. Dharma recommends 24 hours at 70 degrees or higher. You want to start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. The reason why you're doing that is there's still some unbonded dye that might be in this project here. So you want to get all that soda ash rinsed away in the cold water. That way the dark colors don't redeposit onto your light colors. Because when you increase your water up too hot, it's going to kick loose all that unbonded dye. And if you don't get the soda ash out, you could have the dark colors redeposit onto the light. So you start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fibers and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirilon. And Kirilon is a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma. And I do that until the water looks pretty much clear. And once it's clear, I know that I'm ready for my final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I put the projects in the dryer and I'll iron them and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Learn your washing machines, you guys. That's one piece of advice. I know that my top loader, it uh, is about an 18 minute cycle before it will drain and then do the cold water rinse. So at 18 minutes, I come and I stop it and I take my clear cup and I scoop up the water, the hot water, and I look at it and I see if it's, you know, murky. This is the first hot water cycle. There is a lot of dye in that water and I'm not comfortable stopping there. I'm going to do a second hot water cycle using Kirilon and once that hot water cycle water at 18 minutes looks clear, I know that I'm ready for my final wash using the Millsoft. Well, here it is. Here's my assembly line, black back, rainbow spirals after they've been washed and dried and ironed. And I love making these. I love making spirals for one thing. I just they're pleasing to my eye and they're what I prefer to wear. And I love the black back because it just makes the colors pop out and come to life. And I'm so happy I actually have some yellow left on these shirts. And remember how I pointed out some of those secondary colors? I just love, like if you look in the center, that green and turquoise, It up close, it's such a beautiful color. Um, I just, I love making rainbows and I love making spirals. Now here is the 3XL that I was talking about. And because it's so large, I had to photograph it on the kitchen floor and it looks exactly like the others, but it's just different lighting. But even with that um, muddy center uh, with the black, remember, it still turned out absolutely beautiful. And then this is Bella wearing them outdoors in natural light. And these things are just amazing. So what do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.